into the exclusion zone. Eleven minutes to disaster. The first volcanic eruption occurs. The outer part of the lava dome collapses, and a pyroclastic flow cascades over the northern wall of the crater. Eight minutes to disaster. A second eruption occurs, and a larger avalanche of rock and ash pours down the same valley. Then at 1.08 p.m., a third massive eruption sends more volatile material racing down the volcano. It spills over the valley walls at speeds of up to 128 kilometers per hour. A pyroclastic surge breaks away from the flow and spreads across farmland. It sweeps through three villages, killing seven people. The heavy debris continues down Mosquito Gut, destroying more villages, claiming a further 12 lives. In just 25 minutes, 19 islanders are dead. We made a calculated risk, and I just have to give thanks to the Almighty we survived. One month later, with the island still reeling from the disaster, one of Professor Wodge's more extreme scenarios comes true. Sufria Hills blasts another massive pyroclastic flow down its scorched slopes. It hits the abandoned capital Plymouth and literally wipes it off the map. There was no further loss of life, but it could have been very different. Had the volcano erupted this violently initially, it could have killed thousands. Sufria Hills has been active for more than 10 years. Today, just under 4,500 proud islanders still live on Montserrat, including Delia Pond, Slim Daly, and David Lee. But they are cornered in the north of this Caribbean paradise. Half of Montserrat is uninhabitable and is expected to remain so for a decade. <laughs>